Prompt Source is an IDE and repository for natural language prompts. This video will describe what Prompt Source is and why it is needed. For that, we'll describe an ACL 2022 demo paper by the developers of Prompt Source. We'll start with why Prompt Source is needed. Prompting refers to the act of formulating a natural language utterance that can be fed to a language model to induce it to perform a task. For example, in the case of text classification into research disciplines, we might formulate a prompt like, this video describes prompt source, it is about, then the model completion, in this case NLP, can be linked to a class label for classification. Prompting is receiving considerable interest in NLP, partly for its applications in enabling the adaptation of language models to ad hoc tasks, and it's encouraging sample efficiency for fine tuning in low data regimes. Prompt engineering can have a major influence on task performance, especially in zero shot tasks. It has also been shown that training on diverse collections of prompts can enable zero shot task generalization. Given the growing importance of prompting, the question naturally arises, how can we enable users to create, refine, and share prompts? PromptSource aims to rise to this challenge by providing a web-based GUI that supports users in writing and examining prompts, together with a shared repository of community-contributed prompts. There are three key elements to the PromptSource design. First, the adoption of a template language for prompt editing which keeps things simpler than a fully-fledged programming language, but also provides flexibility. Second, Prompt Source supports prompt management by enabling browsing through prompt collections and iterating on existing prompts. Third, it adopts community-driven standards for quality control, with guidelines that evolved from a wide-ranging prompt writing exercise as part of the Big Science project. As of September 2022, Prompt Source includes more than 2,000 prompts across 180 datasets. This collection, all of which has been reviewed for quality control, is referred to as the Public Pool of Prompts, or P3, and has already seen usage in other NLP projects. When designing a tool to support prompt creation, it's worth considering what makes this different from traditional NLP annotation processes. First, Prompts are functions, not labels. They map examples to natural language pairs of inputs and targets. Given this potentially high level of flexibility, it's not immediately obvious how expressive the prompt templating format should be. Second, prompts work at the level of datasets rather than individual examples, and consequently, prompt designers must consider all dataset examples in the creation process. What kind of interface will make this practical? Third, prompt variation is often desirable since different prompts can induce different behaviour, a situation that is quite unlike traditional NLP annotation in which disagreements between annotators are something of a nuisance. How can variation be supported in the prompt creation process? Let's turn now to the prompt source workflow. As an example, we'll consider the task of designing a prompt query for the Stanford Natural Language Inference, or SNLI, dataset. As a refresher, in the task of natural language inference, we are given a premise and a hypothesis, then asked whether the premise entails the hypothesis, i.e. implies it's true, contradicts the hypothesis, i.e. implies it's false, or is simply neutral with an undetermined relationship. To create suitable prompts for SNLI, we will require our prompt query to have answers that can map to SNLI classes. The first stage in the workflow is exploration. The prompt developer examines the SNLI dataset in the browse view, where they can look at some metadata that tells them that the task is natural language inference and explore examples from the dataset. Stages two, three, and four in the workflow employ the sourcing view. Stage two involves writing the prompt itself in the Jinja2 templating language. Stage three involves writing documentation to give the prompt a name, explain where it came from, and communicate whether the prompt is intended for the original task of the dataset, and whether the choices for valid answers are included in the prompt itself, as well as appropriate metrics for evaluating the intended task. 
In stage 4, the prompt author can iterate over these steps to create additional variations of the prompt if desired. Finally, in stage 5, the drafts can be saved and reviewed by others via code review. If accepted, the prompt becomes globally available for others to examine and use. Prompt source prompts are simple to use in combination with the large number of datasets supported by the Hugging Face datasets library. To use a prompt that we've created for SNLI and that has also been accepted by reviewers, we can import the relevant libraries here, prompt source and datasets. Then we can fetch our new prompt by loading the prompts associated with SNLI and selecting our prompt by the name we have given it. To illustrate its use, We'll load an example here by simply loading the training split of SNLI and taking the first example. And finally, we apply our prompt to this example with a call to apply. Printing the zeroth element of the resulting list will yield the example input wrapped in the prompt. And we can similarly print the first element to examine the target output for this example, which in this case was maybe. The Ginger2 template engine is used to author the prompts. This offers more flexibility than rule-based generation, but avoids the complexity of pure Python code, which can be harder to analyze. An example construction of a prompt in Ginger2 is if premise holds, does hypothesis also hold, followed by a separator and then entailed. Here, the placeholders in curly braces are used to reference fields in the corresponding example dict supplied by the datasets library while the three vertical line separator is placed between the conditioning text and the target completion. Note that Ginger2 does enable some fancy string manipulation, but the prompt source guidelines note that most use cases can be covered with a small subset of the full functionality. A few useful idioms were uncovered by the prompt source authors during development. First, a given template may not be applicable for all examples in a dataset, for such cases, Ginger conditionals can be used to skip these examples by converting them to empty strings. Second, some examples are typically employed to generate multiple training instances, notably in cases when they have multiple valid completions. To address this, a choice function is provided that allows particular elements to be selected during dataset generation. Finally, for examples that have multiple valid completions, these can be specified as a separate field by the prompt author and will be available at evaluation time. The user interface is built with Streamlit, so it can be run in the browser. In the first view, which is for dataset browsing, we can jump to a dataset, in this case SNLI, and explore its metadata and examples, here presented with GPT-3 style prompts. This view is particularly useful for verifying prompt behavior across a large number of examples. The next view focuses on the sourcing of prompts. Here, we can jump to a particular dataset. In this case, we're again looking at SNLI and can explore existing prompts or create a new one. We can provide various metadata about the prompt we are creating, including what inspired it, whether it targets the original task considered by the dataset and includes choices in the template, its metrics, language, and answer choices. We then fill out the prompt itself using Ginger templating syntax. Then, after hitting save, we get a preview of how a dataset example will look with our newly created prompt. The third and final helicopter view provides a high-level overview of the prompts that have been collected. We can inspect statistics, as well as scroll through the prompts that have been curated for each dataset. We next turn to the community guidelines associated with contributions to the public pool of prompts. Describing what makes a good prompt is hard, and the community guidelines for contribution evolved through a process of iteration, with a few key objectives in mind. First, the guidelines should provide a standardized vocabulary for discussing prompts that can be used by both prompt authors and reviewers, and they should outline a set of minimum requirements for prompt contributions. Second, they should highlight common errors and best practices. And third, they should gather useful metadata for future research that focuses on prompt engineering. 
the guidelines cover both the prompt templates and the associated metadata. In more detail, the guidelines encourage prompt authors to explicitly state possible completions for prompts, after it was found that this tends to help performance, to remove any spurious ambiguity from prompt targets, and to create multiple prompt variations to underpin research that studies the influence of prompt diversity. Beyond this, the guidelines require prompt authors to only make use of natural language that clearly states the task to be solved in their prompts, rather than code, for example, and to include metadata, such as the reference paper from which a prompt was sourced. We'll next look at a few case studies that illustrate how prompt source has been used in further work. In the T0 work of San et al, a diverse multitask mixture of prompts is used during training, with the goal of improving zero-shot task generalization. In this work, both training and evaluation use a subset of the P3 collection gathered with prompt source. The XGLM work of Lin et al trains on 30 languages as part of a study of cross-lingual generalization. For this, the P3 collection provides a high-quality repository of English prompts, which can form a basis for prompts in other languages through translation. The meta-ICL approach of Lin et al trains on a multitask mixture of in-context learning examples. This work finds that using instructions from the P3 collection during training brings gains in performance. PompSource takes inspiration from a number of prior works. First, it relates to work that has experimented with prompting in various ways, such as GPT-3, PET, T0 and FLAN. Differently from these works, the core focus of prompt source is to support research that involves human written prompts. The project was originally focused on zero-shot learning applications, and there was therefore an emphasis on writing explicit task instructions. However, prompt source can be readily extended to few-shot learning scenarios, as demonstrated by the works of XGLM and Meta-ICL. Prompt source is also related to previous systems for annotating data. Examples include GATE, a system developed 20 years ago for labeling text with many kinds of annotations. There have since been many web-based systems like BRAT for structure annotations and MyMinor for bioinformatics text labeling, as well as works focused on collaboration between annotators such as Yedda. There have been annotation tools that leverage active learning like AlpacaTag which is particularly feasible when the annotation to be performed is done on a per-example basis. Prior work has also considered forms of non-label annotation. Tree Annotator, for example, enabled annotation of tree-like structures. Prompts, which are semi-structured functions, differ substantially from such annotation, as well as other non-label variations. As such, they merit new tools for annotation, a need that prompt source aims to meet. In the video description, you can find links to prompt source resources, slides, and references. Thank you for your attention.